hello viewers uh, welcome to my channel and uh, today's topic is para influenza uh, but before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos and if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseaseandtreatment.com and the link for the website is just below this video so do not forget uh, to visit the website if you need more information and the subscribe button is also below this video now i come to the topic what is para influenza you know you know, para-influenza is uh, refers to a group of viruses which are called human uh, para-influenza viruses, you know, or uh, HPIVs, you know. There are four viruses in this group. And each one uh, causes the different symptoms and different illnesses, you know. And uh, all forms of the viruses cause an infection in either the upper or the lower respiratory tract of the respiratory uh, respiratory area of the person's body you know and the symptoms uh, are like those of uh, common cold you know and uh, when the cases are mild the viruses are often uh, misdiagnosed and uh, most healthy people infected with the HPI we recover with uh, without any treatment you know and uh, a person with the weakened immune system is at risk of developing life-threatening infections. Uh, as I said, there are four types of uh, uh, viruses, you know, and uh, uh, they all cause respiratory infections. Uh, but the type of the infection, the symptoms, and the location of the infection depend on the type of the virus you have, you know. And uh, uh, the four uh, uh, types of HPIV can infect anyone, you know, so there's no discrimination, you know. So, in case of HPIV1, you know, uh, is the leading cause of, uh, like, uh, a crop in children, you know. And the crop is the respiratory illness that uh, manifests as swelling near the vocal cords and uh, in other parts of the upper respiratory system, you know. And it's responsible for the outbreaks of uh, crop in autumn, you know. And uh, uh, the next one is uh, uh, HPIV2, you know. It's the next type. And uh, uh, it causes crop in children, uh, but the doctors detect it less often than HPIV1, you know. And it's seen mostly in the autumn, but uh, to a lesser degree than the first one you know and HPIV3 infection is most associated with the pneumonia and the bronchitis you know which is uh, the swelling uh, from the like uh, inflammation in the smallest stairways in the lungs you know and uh, it often causes them like uh, infections in the spring or in the early summer you know but it appears throughout the year sometimes you know so it's not limited to that uh, particular uh, time only you know and uh, the exact period of time you are contagious hasn't been determined you know but uh, it has been shown that viral shedding and uh, therefore the risk of passing on hpiv3 typically occurs within the first three to ten days of the symptoms you know so in rare cases uh, viral shedding has been seen up to three to four weeks and uh, the fourth one is uh, HPIV4, you know, so it's rare uh, if compared to the previous three ones, you know. And there is no known seasonal pattern of this one, you know. Uh, the next thing is what are the causes and uh, how it transmits, you know. You can become infected in several ways, you know. Uh, it can uh, survive on a hard surface for up to 10 hours, you know. So if you touch a like contaminated surface with your hands and then touch to your nose or your mouth, so you can become infected this way, you know. And uh, it can also infect you through the close contact with an infected person or uh, it usually takes between 2 to 7 days after infection for symptoms to occur, you know. And uh, the common symptoms uh, are very similar to those of the common cold 
uh, which may include like fever or cough or maybe runny nose stuffy nose um, chest pain sore throat shortness of breath wheezing and uh, difficulty in breathing you know and the symptoms uh, are not uh, severe enough to cause the concern in healthy adults you know but they can be life threatening in an infant in an older adult or anyone with the uh, compromised uh, uh, or the weakened immune system you know, like uh, anyone having hiv or maybe aids or maybe any organ transplant you know or uh, gone through the chemotherapy and radiation therapy you know so those people are more uh, at more risk of you know uh, where the life threatening complications can occur you know and uh, if you are part of the high risk group and you have uh, the symptoms you should uh, see uh, the doctor as soon as possible you know so let's put it this way so if you are not in high risk group your doctor may not diagnose but if you are at high risk group you know then uh, like uh, you have aids or uh, weak immune system you know your doctor may want to confirm the particular type of the virus you know which is causing these symptoms and your doctor may do like physical examination to determine if your symptoms so match to those of the hpivs you know and uh, for more accurate diagnosis your doctor may take the throat or the nose swab you know or culture you know and that can detect any and identify the presence of the virus in the cell culture you know and your doctor can diagnose a specific virus by detecting the antigens that your body made to fight uh, the viruses you know and uh, then your doctor uh, for the further evaluation doctor may order the x rays or other imaging tests like ct scan of your chest you know and uh, these both tests like x rays and the ct scan uh, these are the imaging techniques that allow your doctor to see what's happening inside your respiratory system you know and uh, they can help the doctor determine the extent of the symptoms whether you have the complications such as uh, pneumonia etc you know so it helps the doctor to diagnose and uh, uh, choose the right treatment plan you know and uh, there is no treatment uh, that can uh, like uh, eliminate the viruses you know from your body you know and if you have an infection you just have to let it run its course you know and this but the symptoms can be treated you know with over the counter medications like uh, nasal drops and uh, analgesics like uh, aspirin or uh, like uh, acetaminophen you know so in case of fever or pains or you know so just to control that these are the symptomatic treatments you know uh, but it's important to note that children and the teenagers who have a fever and the viral infection should not take uh, aspirin you know and uh, it's linked to the raise syndrome it is a life threatening disorder you know so when it is used uh, to treat the viral illnesses so do not give the aspirin uh, to your children uh, uh it case of any viral infections you know okay so always consult your doctor and uh, the cool and the moist uh, humidifiers can help to uh, uh breathe better you know well you, you can take certain steps to prevent the infection uh, like wash, wash your hands regularly and disinfect the surfaces that can harbor the viruses avoid the close contacts with uh, someone having the like uh, viral infections you know and uh, unfortunately there is uh, currently no vaccine that prevents from the, these viruses you know uh it's not a serious illness for most of the people uh, but it can be life threatening in certain uh, high risk groups and uh, as long as your immune system is functioning properly you don't need uh, Uh, any treatment and uh, you should be able to fight the infections you know thank you very much for watching this video if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com thank you and goodbye